Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use the solderless breadboard, which is just an easy way to make prototype circuits. In the past, students have had a misunderstanding perhaps with the breadboard, that it's some unpleasant thing, but I'm going to show you today that it's not really so bad to use. So let's take a closer look. Here's a close-up of our breadboard. These come in all kinds of different sizes, like this small one I have that I like to use when I'm building smaller circuits. But this is a particularly nice breadboard because it has power supplies, which come in handy. Now I'll say this over and over again in this video, but the only reason we use a breadboard is to make electrical connections between different parts of our circuit. And the only thing you need to know to use a breadboard is which holes are connected together electrically. So here's the secret. On the top and on the sides of our breadboard here, below this red line and above this blue line are what are known as the long buses. And there's two long buses in each one of these strips here. So there's all the holes in the line right below the red line here, and then there's all these holes in a line right above the blue line. Now all the holes below the red line are connected together electrically, and all the holes above the blue line are connected together electrically, but the two sets of holes are not connected to one another. So that's important. Usually we'll hook 5 volts into this line below the red line and ground into the line above the blue line. The other set of holes that we have is here in the middle of the breadboard, and this is usually where we'll build our circuits and put our different circuit components. So here, all the holes in a row are connected together, but the holes in this row are not connected across this center gap here to the holes in that row. So it's only these five holes here that are connected on this breadboard. Also, the holes on this row are in no way connected to the holes on this row here. So let's take a look at building a simple little circuit on this breadboard. So this is the circuit I'm going to want to make, and all this is going to do is light up a little light, which is known as an LED. This is the symbol for the LED here, and all we have is I'm going to take a 9 volt battery, which is going to give us our voltage here. Current is going to flow down through the LED, through this 330 ohm resistor, and then out to ground. So one way I could build this, if I push the breadboard off to the side, is I could take my three physical components, one which is the LED here, another which is the resistor, and the 9 volt battery, and I could put these together like so, and I could literally just pinch them with my fingers so that the two components wires are touching one another. And then I could touch one side to the battery's positive and the other side to the ground, and you can see that the light lit up there, right? But this would get pretty complicated if you wanted to build a big circuit with it. So let's try to build it on the breadboard instead. So here, I'm going to use this connector to hold my 9-volt battery, and it breaks out the positive side and the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the positive side here into this long rail, and it doesn't matter where I plug it in because, again, the holes along the red line here are all connected together, and I'm going to plug the black wire into the, uh, the blue line here. That's kind of a typical convention. You see it's labeled plus and minus, so we'll just go along with that. And then we will connect our battery to it. So one thing we wouldn't want to do is we wouldn't want to put this red wire and the black wire into the same vertical column here of holes, because that would create a short circuit. So I have the battery connected. Now what I need to do is I need to put my LED in the circuit so that I can get some current running down through there. And I need to put my resistor in the same place. Now, to get these two connected together, do basically what I did by pinching them together. They need to be in the same row. Otherwise, the LED won't light up. Then I need to complete the circuit by connecting this through to ground. And there it is, we got light again. So remember, the important thing was that these two went in the same row. If I had put them in the same column over here in the midsection, then that LED wouldn't have lit up. So again, let me move them back to the same row. And what you can see is it really doesn't matter where I plug these into along this column here. Because when you connect these together electrically, as far as we're concerned, you make them all the same voltage. So I could take my battery and I could unplug it and I could move it down here it would do exactly the same thing, and I could put it in any one of these holes. If I were to reverse the order of the leads, the light wouldn't come on because the diode only lets current move through in one direction. So we'll put it back there. You can see there's nothing to it. Now, probably the most confusing part is how we go from this circuit diagram here to what we actually build on the breadboard. So I'm going to make a whole video describing how to do that later on. 
One other thing that I wanted to make sure and clarify is that the holes next to the red line up top here are not connected to the holes next to this red line down here. If you wanted to connect them all together, you would have to take a wire from one of these holes and put it into one of the holes here. Here's a quiz to help you check and see if you understand how pins are connected on a breadboard. What I want you to answer for me is for each of these sets of pins over here, which I've called out with markers on the picture, I want you to say true if those pins are connected to one another, like one and two here, or one and three, or false if they are not connected together. So for each of these pairs, say true or false whether those pins are connected to each other or not. So you could go back and watch the video again to find the answers to this question, but I also want to show you how you could use your multimeter to figure out which pins are connected to each other. If you remember from the multimeter video, I showed you how this little speaker here will let you test continuity. So all I did was I clipped a couple of wires into my multimeter leads, and if I touch them together, the multimeter will beep. So let's start going through these. One and two are up here somewhere, and we can see that those are not connected together, but one and three are connected together, and then one and four, we go down here somewhere, we'll see that those are not connected together, one and five over here somewhere is not going to be connected together. Five and six across the center of this breadboard here, we will see that they're on the same row, but because they cross the center, they're not connected. But five and seven are connected together.